Good afternoon. So another video coming to you from the modular shed. Let's step inside and take a look at this. So this is a new boost converter I've just uh, purchased on eBay. And this one doesn't have the LED display on the little plug-in board. It has an LCD and I'm going to peel off the little LCD sticker cover. So let's power this up and see what it looks like. And then I'm going to use it to power up some of these power supplies, which are essentially AC to 12 volt DC. But of course you can put a high voltage DC in here. They're quite happy with that because all it does uh, initially is go through that bridge rectifier. So that's fine. Um, what power do I have? I have this now I think it's going to be quite low voltage because my lithium pack which is here I'm currently charging it from mains because <laughs> there's precious little solar at the moment um, so 55 watts going in but you can see it's quite low and I think it's uh, probably only about 10 and a half volts at the moment so let's plug it in and see what happens nothing happens oh I've got an error message on the power pack let's try that again <laughs> no it doesn't like it I think the um, instantaneous current rush into that capacitor which is straight across the input there is causing a problem with the power pack let's try a different source of power right this one is from the cigarette lighter output so that's going to be 12.6 volts or thereabouts see if that works and yes that's fine okay let's get this positioned so the display is showing 12.3 volts on the output and that's not surprising because a boost converter let's just do a quick sketch on here is uh, incoming power goes through uh, it's an inductor first isn't it and then goes through a diode on the output I believe that's the topology and here there's a switch and you open and close this switch really fast that um, instantaneously shorts through the inductor down to ground of course when you let go of the switch when you open the switch this springs back up like a big spring and goes to a higher voltage that's how the boost converter operates now the boost converter is currently switched off uh, there's a red light to indicate when that comes on at the moment it's showing this uh, ridiculously bright green light which is actually the CV light now that's a bit strange I would have thought when this thing is not boosting that should really be off because all that we've got on the output is uh, the voltage coming in on the input minus the diode drop the diode is there so that's a bit strange but that one does come on now before I switch on the output this is a 24 volt 21 watt bulb I will go into set which is there and just check the output Well, the voltage is set to 24 volts that's fine the current is just behind my little timer clock thing there which you won't be able to see uh, is set to 0.9 amps well let's just take that up a bit let's set that to point uh, to one amp and that's the set procedure this interface is one heck of a lot uh, simpler than the LED interfaces this is really straightforward you press set you go up and down in two fields voltage and current you press set again to store it and you press the on off button to enable and disable the boosting so we're going to be boosting 24 volts let's see if that works yes it does and we're drawing uh, 0.93 amps we've still got the blue light there's the red light saying that the boost function is operating the green light is saying uh, that it's in constant voltage rather than constant current mode I could put it into constant current mode oh that's interesting that stops the boosting and I can do that by bringing down that's up bringing down the current setting let's set that oh it goes straight back into boosting mode that's interesting and now you can see uh, the orange light is on here that means it's in constant current it's ever so slightly flickery I don't know whether that's going to come over on camera but certainly this thing when it's in constant current seems to be a little bit jittery downside of this unit perhaps uh, no fan 
So let's go back into set, put the current, that's setting the voltage, I didn't really want to do that, set the current, put that back up to uh, one amp set, that's on, now that fan should be on now I think, no it's not, that's interesting, I'm not quite sure when the fan kicks in, I thought it was around one amp, that's not drawing one amp is it, maybe I'll put the voltage up actually. Let's go up to 24, let's go up to 25, set, uh, set, oh yeah, the fan has kicked in. So yeah, it seems to be as you approach one amp, the fan turns on to keep the heatsink, which has the MOSFET, I'll just turn that off, the MOSFET uh, there, that's the big component the dual diode where they just put the two diodes in parallel uh, there, uh, heatsink there, the fan will also cool the inductor a little bit. Yeah, so that's how that thing works. Now as I say, because this is a boost converter with a very simple and primitive topology, pretty much just this inductor which is there, diode which is this component down there, and the MOSFET switch, there's the MOSFET switching on and off, of course you can't turn this MOSFET on for too long, so the PWM tends to be quite low here. If you PWM it, the output goes up in voltage. If you don't, which means that this is now permanently off, then the output is the same as the input, minus whatever resistance there is in the inductor. It's not going to be much, it's quite fat uh, copper, enameled copper windings. And of course that diode drop, it's probably a shock key. So let's remove the bulb with this really rather oversized screwdriver. That's probably a bit hot. Um, I suppose I should turn the input to this thing off really. Let's take out that cigarette lighter plug. And now I want to connect this um, mains down to 12 volt power supply. Um, this is two amps, I believe, to the output of my boost converter and then raise the voltage up to a sufficient voltage to get that power supply to come on. And I seem to remember this one needed about 60 volts, I think. But that's fine, because this unit goes up to 120 volts. This isn't my normal screwdriver, this is my modular shed workshop screwdriver. And it's really for building the modular shed, and it's, it's a bit big, really. Right, let's power this unit up. Now, interestingly, that's a point, isn't it? If this doesn't come on, and the output doesn't come on, when I put power to the input, then this does not have a mode where you can, and the user interface doesn't support this, where you can get this thing to come on and boost immediately. It doesn't have that. So at the moment, this um, power supply here is only getting about 12 volts, and that's not enough to fire it up and make it uh, have its output come on. So let's go into this interface and take the voltage right up. And I'll go initially, I think, to 60 volts. That'll do, set. Uh, one amp, that current limit shouldn't matter too much because we've not got any load on there. Right, let's switch it on, see if that triggers this to come on. Well, it did briefly, but then it went back off. So. I think we need some more volts. Let's turn that off, set. Uh, how far are we going to go? Let's get to 80 volts. Okay, 80 volts, set. Power this thing on. And yes, we should have a nice stable uh, 12 volts at the output of this power supply. Right, now, what am I going to do next? Well, next, I'm going to open this because in here, came in a few days ago. Oh, that's no good. That's really hopeless. I'll just tear it. Um, there should be another one of these power supplies, in fact two of them, another one of the 12 volt PSUs and a 5 volt. Well, I'm assuming that's the 5 volt. Now this is 5 volts, 2 amps, so that's only 10 watts. Uh, it's a little bit smaller than the 12 volt one. And then this should be another one of these 12 volt power supplies. Now I'm not too interested in the 5 volt power supply today. What I want to do, why are those different sizes? Oh, they're, they're not, it's just that there's a P2 
piece of PCB that hasn't been snapped off there. I'll do that now. Yes, yeah, so that's identical to that one. Now what I want to do is I want to put the inputs of these two power supplies in parallel on this high voltage, this 80 volts. And then I want to put the two outputs of these power supplies and stack them in series. So the negative of one will connect to the positive of the other. And that should be fine because these power supplies are isolated. They're transformer based power supplies. Um, the isolation barrier is the transformer, the opto isolator for feedback and this little uh, EMI, I believe it is um, capacitor which um, links the primary and secondary sides of the circuit. Now, of course, that should absorb any potential difference. So this should be fine, but let's uh, wire it up and find out because this is the basis of my three rail power supply for my big audio project, the vocoder. I need uh, plus 12 volts, minus 12 volts, plus five volts. So I have to get this plus and minus 12 volts thing sorted which is why I want to connect negative on one to positive on the other and then measure across the outer two points. See if we get 22 volts. Let's just turn that off so that this thing shuts off. There's a fair bit of capacitance here, isn't there? That'll keep it going for a little while. Um, I'll put another wire on here and link it in parallel to there. Now I'm not too concerned about polarity. In fact, I'm not even going to bother to check which way round I've got this, even though this is DC output it doesn't really matter because you've got a bridge rectifier there so it will either uh, go through two of those diodes or the other two doesn't really matter which two right i've got another bit of this dual uh, zip wire i suppose it's called or bell wire why won't that open because i haven't done that so i'll solder that into my second power supply Right, let's solder this. Oh, I've got the wrong tip on the iron. I've got the little tiny pointy tip. Oh, what I'll have to do. I'm not sure why my lights are flickering. It's actually sunny, and I'm just wondering whether there's sun on the solar panels, because the lights in here are solar powered, and whether the charge controller is actually sort of doing something. Maybe it's on fire like the other one was. Right, solder these on here. If I can see what I'm doing. I just about can. Okay, that's good. Um, I will now parallel that up with this and fire them both up. Right, move the soldering on across slightly. And that's got 12 volts on. I suppose actually I could power that down while I put this in parallel here and a slightly smaller screwdriver but it isn't much smaller and now I've got to get these uh, paralleled up shall I twist them together yeah perhaps I will right attach these back in here the capacitance in those big output capacitors should have faded away by now would be my hope I'm slightly cack handed because I'm standing up because I don't yet have a chair that's the right height for this shelf. This shelf is actually far too high. It's about a meter off the floor. And yeah, I haven't managed to find a, a chair yet. And I don't really want these touching. Will it matter? Or well, maybe not if it's just corner to corner. Right, first of all then, let's see whether I can power these two up. Still got my one amp current limit on here, but I wouldn't imagine these have a one amp quiescent draw. Let's power on and go to 80 volts. And these two come on. That's good. Now the bit that I'm slightly concerned about, which is connecting the uh, positive of one to the negative of the other. Well, let's just do it. So switch my high voltage off yeah that falls quite slowly doesn't it oh those have gone off nice and synchronized okay let's put a wire across there okay positive of one which one actually is that that's positive there connected to negative of this with this piece of 
white wire. Wait for the bang. No bang. And neither should there be because, as I say, galvanically isolated. So the question now is, am I getting 24, probably slightly more, uh, volts across these two outer connections? Well, let's find out. Right, I don't have my proper meter probes. I only have these crop clips in here. And they'll have to do... Let's connect that to POS12 and that to NEG12. What have we got? 24 volts. Why is that not negative 24? Oh, because that's positive. Yeah, so that's positive. Yeah, so that's the 24 volts. If I come down to there... Oh, I should have stripped this back a bit. I can't get to that very easily. No, I can't get to that. I'll have to strip that back a bit. Okay, let's try this again. Switch that on. We have 80 volts going into them. Let's check the 24 volts across the two which is there and that of course will be 12 volts 12.2 and if I move that back out to there for 24 that will be okay a bit less 12.13 but uh, yeah 12 0 12 so one of them wait a minute I've connected pos to neg yeah, that's right. So if this is ground, if I talk about that as ground, in fact, let's connect that to that middle point. Then this one out here will be plus 12 volts, which it is. And this one across here, try not to short them, is minus 12 volts. So there I have it, my plus and minus 12 volt power supplies fed from a high voltage DC from one of these boost converters. And I quite like this one. Oh, there's the current. It's actually quite low. And then there will be a third one, which again, on the AC side, which is there, will be linked into this high voltage DC. And the minus of this will be linked to this common point here. And that will give me plus five volts from this power supply to give me the full range of uh, supplies that I need. Minus 12, plus 12, or plus 12, minus 12 and plus five. Well, I think that's the result. So the next thing I need to do is to mount all of this, and there are holes in all of them, yes, onto um, a bit of plywood. I've got this piece here, and then I'm gonna need distribution for all the vocoder boards. Well, I made up this distribution board here, which just happens to mate with this power supply, but this one doesn't have enough current on the minus 12 volts uh, for the vocoder, so that's going. Uh, there's another row of connectors there which are just um, laid out in a slightly different sequence for another one of these combined power supplies, which again isn't going to be man enough for the job. But what I'll do is I'll put all the various outputs of my 12s and my 5, not my 80, uh, into here, and then I've got all my JSTs here which can distribute out to the various boards of that system and of course um, this idea is quite universal because you can get these power supplies in a range of uh, different voltages that way around typically 5 12 15 uh, they do them in 24 volts as well and also a really good range of currents these are the two two amp units which i think will be fine i might need a bit more current on the five volts so i might go for a slightly bigger one of those but uh, yeah, you can get these on all sorts of different current ratings. So you can pretty much put together a bespoke power supply with all the different voltage rails that you need by going from any voltage coming in. Don't quite know why that didn't work on the 10 volts. Maybe it's just too low. Actually, I don't know what the input spec of this thing is, but it works fine on 12.6. Take that up to a nice high voltages to get these things fired up. And I've got my multi-rail power supply. Anyway, that's all I wanted to do in the modular workshop today, so cheerio.